Hi! In this video, I'm going to be showing how I uh, replace seals in the home fill oxygen compressor. But before I start, since it was originally sold as a medical device, I think I need to make a disclaimer. I am not a factory trained or authorized repair technician, and the information presented here may be inaccurate or incomplete. If you're a medical patient using the machine for oxygen therapy, do not attempt to work on it yourself. Take it to an authorized service provider. This video is intended for glass workers with proper tools and mechanical skills who accept all of the risks of damaging the machine and possibly injuring themselves. So, with that out of the way, let's get over to the bench. So with all the disclaimers out of the way, I think I'll get to work here uh, replacing the seals on this unit. Uh, actually getting a clear camera shot is going to be difficult and I'm going to do my best, but I may be fumbling around and maybe difficult to see some of the things I'm trying to point out, but this is a quick video and I'm doing my best. First step is there's four screws that hold the top on and I've got three of them out now and really nothing that informative about watching unscrewing. Top comes off really easy, standard Phillips screwdriver. And now we can see what's going on inside. The home fill is a five-stage air compressor, oxygen compressor. And the reason for the five stages, there's actually a physical limit to how much you can compress a gas using one piston. And so uh, some very serious industrial units use 10 stages or so to pump up to 10,000 PSI. But this little guy is a somewhat reduced cost, um, kind of consumer grade unit that has five stages. The first stage is the largest stage. And you can kind of see in there, it's a very large diameter piston and cylinder. And the first stage is the largest piston the largest cylinder, and then you can follow around, follow the hoses, and see that the second stage is a little bit smaller, and it also is on the other side of the machine. I don't know if they do that for balance or just convenience or whatever, but uh, back around to the other side and the third stage is on the back and the fourth and fifth stage are on the front and these are the ones that we're going to be working on. The fourth and the fifth stage is the highest pressure stages and once again I'm trying to adjust my camera here see if I can get this thing a little bit better in the frame the fourth and the fifth stages are the stages that uh, have the most critical seals because as the stages increase the pressure increases so the fifth stage is going to have the highest pressure and the greatest amount of seal damage. These seals are just little elastomeric seals. They're, they're adequate for what they do, but you know, this is a, a somewhat uh, inexpensive, reduced cost consumer grade machine, and uh, you know, it has its limitations. So um, it's important to just look at the plumbing and see you've got these very small little tubes here 
with hexagonal fittings. And these tubes all have to be removed. The fittings all have to be removed. And in particular, the fourth stage can be tricky because it's possible when you disassemble it to put the cylinder head on in, a, in the backward direction. And this is not good. It will not work if you put it on backward. The fifth stage is a little bit easier to identify because it has a, a pressure sensor coming out of the far end and it's a fairly easy. It's also geometrically uh, kind of impossible to, if you put it on in the wrong direction, the hoses don't line up. But the fourth stage is very easy to get wrong. So it's a really, really, really good idea to make a mark of some sort to indicate which fitting goes where. Now, in order to disassemble this, it's going to be necessary to remove these fittings. These are high pressure, compression type, uh, brass to copper fittings that it's probably pretty easy to damage these uh, compression nuts if you use the wrong tool. So don't just go get a pair of pliers, get the proper tool. This tool is the proper tool. It's actually for, it's an automotive tool for uh, use on brake lines and it uh, has uh, more contact than a typical wrench and a, a cutout that allows it to slip over the tubing. It's probably okay to also use a regular open end wrench. Just be careful. If you booger this up, if you strip the hex thread, you're probably going to be in for a rough time because there's no easy way to replace that with common hardware store parts. So very carefully, and this one, I'm going to get my hand around here. They're not tightened super horribly tight. And so it's possible that my warning about the wrench type may be a little bit overboard, but I always Okay, that one was a little bit tighter. I always prefer to use the proper tool if the proper tool is available because it's very, very easy to booger things up using the wrong tool. The space is kind of tight in here. It's really important to be aware of these little tubes. They're not super fragile, but they're also really tiny and they're made of copper and you don't want to damage them because <clears throat> if you damage, kink, destroy, bend, whatever, you're probably going to be in for a very difficult time attempting to find a replacement. Also keep in mind that this plumbing especially the uh, fifth stage is high pressure stuff and high pressure can be very dangerous. So you want to make sure to be as careful as you possibly can. This one is kind of resisting a little bit. You want to be as careful as you can to not damage things. Let me see if I can So as I said in the disclaimer, be careful when doing this. There's nothing that's super tricky. It's a fairly simple device, but, and there's nothing that's like super tricky for somebody with mechanic skills 
Anybody who's ever worked on a motor, rebuilt a motor, should have no problem with this. But if your mechanic skills, if you don't trust your mechanic skills, you should probably not attempt this. And definitely, definitely, if you're depending on it for being able to breathe, don't work on it yourself. So the bolts here, just regular quarter 20 hex head standard bolts, and I'm using a flex drive to get them loosened. It's a, as, as with everything in this machine, or actually I think anybody that works on motors would find it's common on just about anything that always hard to have to find room for tools to get your hand in. So I have now removed the cylinder head and the cylinder and now you can see the little seal here. So, so there's two pieces here. This is the alignment ring. It's a kind of a, a lubricated, uh, kind of a, a, a solid uh, material. I don't know what it is, some sort of plastic. But this keeps the piston aligned. It doesn't do any sealing, but it keeps the thing moving in the right direction. And the seal is this little elastomeric guy on the far end. The piece over here, this is a plastic sleeve that doesn't need to be removed. The only piece that actually needs to be removed is the cylinder and the cylinder head. Now, if you look inside the cylinder, it's kind of difficult to see here with the lighting the way I have it. The inside of the cylinder is very highly polished and even the tiniest little scratch will cause it to not work. So be really, really careful about touching the cylinder at all. It's better not to touch it at all, but when the seals deteriorate, a lot of times they leave a residue, which you can see a kind of a, a black, let me get the camera out of the thing again here, kind of have a bit of a, a black residue. You can see the, the black residue. This is the, the particles that are shed from the seal as it deteriorates. And it's good to remove those particles just to do a nice clean job of, of replacement. But never use anything more aggressive than a Q-tip and compressed air. Yeah, the material, it doesn't really stick. And there's no reason to get aggressive. And I think you can see there is a little bit of residue that has been removed from the cylinder. And it's kind of important to, uh, to do a clean job. So. Going over here to the, and excuse my camera motion here, it's kind of hard to do this with just one guy working in tight quarters trying to manage the camera at the same time. So now I'm going to be taking off the, the fifth stage cylinder.
And as always, just in general, it's a good rule to follow. If anything feels like it's getting stuck, or it's binding, or it's anything other than feeling good, feeling loose, feeling like it should come off, don't force it. If you're not comfortable with what you're doing, don't do it. This one, as you can see, this one is substantially, the fifth stage is substantially smaller than the fourth. So I'm just very carefully. removing the residue. So the, the little guide ring here is a split ring. It's got a, a cut in it. And so it's relatively easy to rotate it around and find the cut and pull it off. So you can kind of see here but it's kind of got that split in the end. Getting, the, getting this little guy off, the actual seal is somewhat more challenging. And I don't know the factory recommended procedure. What I do know is be careful, don't use aggressive tools, don't use aggressive force, don't damage the little shaft that the little seal sits on, but at the same time, don't worry about destroying the seal because you're going to be putting a new one on. So having said all of that about not using aggressive tools, if anybody has a better idea, please let me know. I'm going to very gently and carefully use a really sharp point number 11 exacto knife. being very careful not to scratch the shaft, knowing that I'm destroying the seal in the process of removing it. Very, very, very carefully, very gently. I'm just taking little bites of it off. This is the little spring. It, it's a elastomeric seal that has a little spring to keep it held open. And I'm just being as gentle and as careful as I can be fumbling around in ignorance because I actually don't know what I'm doing kind of making it up on the spot. Okay, so I have successfully removed the little seal. Let me do a, uh, get the camera out here and see if I can get a, if I can get a close up, see if the little guy will be in focus. So there's a close up of what the shaft looks like after the seal has been removed. And I'm going to 
go over and see if I have any better luck on the other one. This guy comes off pretty easy because he's got that nice split. Kind of hard to work in a confined space while still showing anything of value on the camera. Once again, trying to just take little bites here and just bite away the elastomer without boogering up the little brass shaft. Of course, if anybody that's watching this actually knows the secret, please teach me. I've never been trained in this. I've never read any of it in an instruction manual. I just am using my experience of 60 years of making stuff to kind of try to figure it out. And there we have it. And the brass part is undamaged. All is well. Now I'm going to go get the little seal kit. So here's the little seal kit. These guys are available from a seller on eBay. And I think they may also be a semi-standard industrial product, but I've read that one guy actually did try to find these from an industrial supplier and determined that nope, they're similar, but not identical, that they actually are special. So, first thing to do, the, the little guide ring goes on pretty easy because this guy is split. Now, of course, since we're putting on the, the good stuff here, I'm going to be kind of careful to be as careful as you can possibly be. Now, the seal itself is what's called a, a spring-energized cup seal. You can see maybe, I don't know how in focus this camera is, there's a, a fairly good view of the spring side, and then the other side is black rubber. Or no, I, I shouldn't say rubber, it's some sort of an unspecified, unknown elastomer, but the spring keeps the little cup open, and the open end of the cup is the part that actually does the work, does the work of compressing, so you put it in with the spring side facing outward, facing the cylinder head and just simply press it on and it goes on oh so easy. 
Then you take your cylinder and notice that it's got the O-ring on one side and the kind of the reduced diameter bore on the other side. And oh so carefully, you don't want to get that, that seal folded over. If it feels like it's not going on smoothly and carefully, don't force it, which is just in general a kind of a kind of a good good plan to follow. Don't force things when you're working on them. Then this little guy. also goes on. They, they go on a lot easier than they come off. I can tell you that. And probably don't need to say this, but this little uh, guide ring with the split, you don't want to overstress it, overstretch it. You want to stretch it just barely enough Open it up just barely enough that it does the job and makes it over the, the protrusion. But if you pull it too far, there's a chance it won't snap back into place, especially if you break it. Now this one is a tiny bit trickier. There we go. Looks successful. Looks undamaged. Get that little baby seal in place. Presto! In place, ready to go. Very carefully and very gently rocking and twisting and not pushing hard. Definitely don't want to be pushing hard. Get that little guy in place. So, time to reassemble. I suspect that if I actually had factory training that there would be a torque spec on this guy, but I just kind of use my mechanic instinct to, yeah, that feels about right. So, you know, it's only a quarter twenty screw. You don't want to use gorilla force on it. It is compressing an O-ring, and it should be, you know, anybody who's worked on sensitive mechanical stuff should be able to just feel that, oh yeah, that feels about right. Same thing is true of tightening these little compression fittings. They're small and they're brass. So you got to be careful. Anybody that's worked on hydraulic lines or brake lines or any other kind of small compression fitting like this should have the touch to be able to do it successfully. And once again, This is really, if you have a well-developed sense of how things work and a well-developed set of skills doing mechanic work, this isn't the most horribly difficult thing. I'm sure that any gearhead, any motorhead has, would probably look at this and go, dude, that's easy. But you know, if you don't have 
that skill set, a very good chance that you're going to end up with having a bad day trying to do this. It's very easy for somebody like me who's pretty, pretty much spent my entire life around tools and making things and taking things apart. Very easy for me to fall into the trap of assuming that, oh yeah, everybody knows how to use tools. Well, not everybody does. I've seen, well, uh, let me back up a little bit here. The, the, the commonly available seal kit on eBay is for the fourth and fifth stage only. And this makes sense because those are the ones that really wear out bad. The lower pressure seals just have less forces applied and they tend to last longer. I have seen uh, advertisements for a kit that includes the third stage seal, but they've never used that. The, they seem to always be out of stock. So, just very, very carefully. And just to be repetitive and say it over and over and over again, just in case you didn't hear the first 500 times I said it, careful and slow is the name of the game here. If you think you're in trouble, if you think things are going wrong, stop. Think about it. Possibly find a, a friend or somebody that might be willing to help you who has experience doing mechanic work. This one is the, the kind of troublesome one and I really, really, really do not want to cross thread this guy. And of course, that is always, that's where the, the years of intuition come in when you're dealing with a thread that is not going on as smoothly as you like, to know the fine difference between is it cross-threaded or is it just a little tight? And it was just a little tight. It was not cross-threaded. So there we have it. Home fill seal replacement as attempted by a guy who doesn't know how to do it, but kind of has some skills and some experience and hope it helps. Hope somebody finds it useful. Bye bye.